Hi, I'm Marlo Artis. Thank you so very much for visiting my blog, Tar Heel Teachers. Today, I'm at Luther Nick Gerald's Middle School, and I am joined by 7th grade math teacher, Phyllis Cannon. How are you doing? Good, I'm fine. I wanted to speak with you, Miss Cannon, because you recently received a special honor. Can you tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> um, I was named math teacher for Cumberland County for North Carolina Teachers of Math. And it is an honor. I mean, I, I, I'm, I feel humble because I'm sure there are a lot of teachers in the county that, you know, have the same capabilities and could have got, gotten that honor. What do you think it was so, about you that um, had them to name you? Because you didn't sign up for this. Somebody nominated right, you for the process. Right. Who nominated you? Um, I want to say it was our math specialist and our um, uh, middle school, uh, whoever was in charge of the middle schools. Uh, was it Miss Fields? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So Miss Pearson and Miss Fields. Yeah. So what do you think it was about you that allowed them to nominate you for this outstanding mathematics award? Because I'm old. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I think um, being involved with rewriting the Common Core standards, because I was real big on that the first year it started. And um, my students have shown growth for the last couple of years that I've been here. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And probably my attitude about teaching, because I, I love what I do and I think, you know, when people meet me, they realize that, oh, she enjoys what she's doing. So, you know, just a, a good spirit, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I will vouch for you. Miss um, Ken and I took a class a couple of years ago yes. at Fayetteville State University and she just really blew me away with her outstanding spirit and how energetic you are and just so committed. I mean that really comes through when people have conversations with you, how committed you are to your craft. Yeah. And I think it is. I think when you're committed to a career that you're doing, it shows in in how you handle your kids and how you react and um, intermingle with your colleagues. I think it does. So. You mentioned earlier that you were very instrumental in rewriting some of the county documents for Common Core. Right. So how do you feel that it's a possibility that come this time next year or in the next couple of years we may not have Common Core? How do you feel about that? Um, okay, I guess. Because things come and go. And I think, you know, they don't ask us. Mm -hmm. They just, the state does it. But I think sometimes we don't allow... Um, a concept or something to take effect. We don't keep it long enough to see if it's a lasting effect, is it improved? Because this is only the third year of Right, absolutely. So I think we change too much in midstream. And, you know, it's like you probably end up going back to old school. Old school, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So. I see your shirt. Is that Winston Salem State University? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's Ram. your alma mater. Yes, it is. So, whenever you were a student at Winston Salem State, did you know that you were going to be a math teacher? I knew I was going to be a math teacher when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and not a, well, not a math teacher. I knew I was going to be a teacher. I think mm -hmm. I started out as a business education teacher. Um, I was influenced by my uh, typing teacher in high school. But then once I came out of college, I, um, I started working as a business education teacher. And then my husband's military, so we moved a lot of places, and sometimes it wasn't a position in high school. Mm -hmm. So I ended up kind of subbing in middle school and elementary school, and a lot of times I would be working with math. So once I went back and got my math degree, and started working with middle school and elementary school, I knew that was my niche. Mm -hmm. What is it about middle school that appeals to you? You know, I just, I love their uh, honesty. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> they are so honest. <laughs> One day, they'll tell you, you know, Miss Cannon, I don't like your hair. Or, Look at those shoes you got on. But they have, you know, it's no harm in right. it. Um, and they don't hold grudges. That's true. You know, they can. You can be upset with them, or they can be upset with you one day. The next day, they come in, they've forgotten it. So having tough skin in middle school, but they're just honest. I, I just like, and I think I like that we can shape their minds in mm -hmm. middle school. You know, and they're not the babies. 
Sometimes they come as a baby, sometimes yeah. they don't. But I like that age group, I really do. They're more needy, too. They are. Yeah. They are. And I, I think I like that aspect. I think the fact that I enjoy the fact that they need me. Yeah, I that's think true. I, I think I you, like that. Yeah, because I say, you know, to all of us, if they weren't here, we wouldn't have a job. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Absolutely. Well, I wouldn't have a purpose. <laughs> That's true. That's because true. it feels like that's my purpose is yeah. to and you can them. And you can influence them. If if they truly know that you care about them, you can influence them. And I had a principal to say, you know what, sometimes you may not realize how much you've taught a middle school child until they've graduated from high school. Wow. And they come back to say, you know, what you taught me, you know, I, it really helped me. Mm -hmm. So what is, if you had to say, what's like the most enjoyable aspect of teaching for you, what would it be? I think when the students come back and let me know that I've made a difference in their life, you know, when they come back and tell me that they're in certain careers and that I had an influence over them, I think that's the biggest thing. Mm, that's profound. It really is. What are you, in your opinion, what's the greatest challenge facing mathematics teachers? <sighs> what is the greatest challenge? Uh, maybe, I don't know, helping kids to get the basic skills, mm -hmm. I think maybe. Because I think if they come with basic skills, then the other concepts we teach won't be hard for them. But they don't come with basic skills, like knowing how to find a percent of a number, discounts and stuff like that, or, or long division, you know, when they have to. So basic concepts, I think is the biggest challenge because we have a remediation class now mm -hmm. and it's just basic skills that our kids don't have. They can use a calculator but if they don't have a calculator when it comes to just simple adding and subtracting and dividing money, they can't do it. Do you think it's a generational thing or it's an instructional approach? Something lacking in elementary or do you think it's just this generation may have a problem with those basic I skills? I think it's both. It's probably generation too. But I think too it's basic skills. I, when I went to school mm -hmm. and I learned, we did rote memory for multiplication facts and we did, we stayed on your long division until you got it, you know. So I don't know, and I, I don't want to say it's how we teach it, because I'm, I'm not in elementary school and I don't know their approaches right. and what they do, but probably a little of both, you know. Um, and I think maybe we're trying to teach them concepts that they're not ready for in elementary school too instead of staying with the basics because I know forward. yeah because I know in elementary school some of the kids are doing algebra you know pre pre algebra mm -hmm. you know and some of them just don't have the basic skills to do it without a, a calculator because I was raised up with grandparents I had a grandfather that could not read but you could not cheat him out of his money because he could count mm -hmm. you know and he could he understood so maybe Common sense thinking with man. You right. know, that's the to me that's the hardest thing to help kids to understand. And maybe it's our uh, generation where it's what's it micro micro generation where they yeah, everything microwave. is right now microwave, microwave generation, generation. Mm -hmm. where they want everything now so they want to hurry up and get it yeah. yeah and they don't really get the concepts that's going to help build for them. Tell us about your first teaching experience, your first assignment as a teacher. My first teaching was that experience, math experience, either one. Um, my first teaching experience was in Arizona. Mm -hmm. My husband was stationed out there, and I was teaching at Tolleson uh, High School. And I want to say I was the first black teacher they had there, and they had a lot of Indians mm -hmm. from the reservation mm -hmm. that came and taught. And um, and I think that year I taught uh, business, math, and economics, and then I coached the girls' uh, volleyball team. But I don't know, it was probably, I learned as much from them as they did from me, because I was new, I was young too, so you know, just out of college. But probably that was more memorable, because it was my first. So. Mm -hmm and maybe some of the things that um, I didn't know how to, you know, 
relate to the kids as much as I do now, which comes with experience. experience. Yeah. What would you tell that first year Miss Cannon? What would the Miss Cannon now say to that Miss Cannon? Those years ago. Get to know your kids first. You know, I think a lot of us go into our classrooms want to teach, 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 teach the concepts, get to know your kids. And once you get to know your kids, then it's easier to teach them because then you have a relationship with them and they trust you and you trust them. Well, to me, it's quite obvious why you were selected as the outside <laughs> math teacher. I have enjoyed this time. I thank you so much for agreeing well, to speak with me. I me. hope to come back and speak with you again soon. Okay. Are you going to the conference? Before I let you go, I are am. you going to the conference? Yes, I am. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. Have you it. been I, before? I have. Mm -hmm. And I always learn something new or something different that I can use. But thank you. I appreciate this. You make me feel honored that yes. you wanted me to be a part yes. of your life. Yes, I'm so so um, excited to have you, and I'm so honored to have you, and I wish you well. I hope you enjoy the rest of your school year. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Oh.